I'm Sam from Chess Obsess. The focus of my channel is to share and educate on how to buy less, buy better. It's a philosophy that I've adopted in recent years that helps me to be selective in what I buy. The things that I buy are typically crafted thoughtfully by artisans who love what they create. These things often take a higher initial investment, but if chosen correctly can be repaired and maintained forever. Hence, buy less, buy better. There's something quite interesting about a white sneaker. They're one of the most simple to wear and mainstream items in any person's wardrobe. And for the last five years or so, they are a must have item. Due to their popularity, there are now hundreds of different types of white sneakers, from chunky designs to slim designs, from animal print to completely minimalistic designs. If you have a particular love, there's probably a white sneaker out there for you specifically. Now me, I'm interested in footwear. I may have a slight addiction to footwear. So as a person who is interested in footwear and also with a desire to find a sneaker that will last longer than even my Koyos, which lasted a good three years of consistent and fairly hard wear, I was interested in finding a white sneaker that offered me no compromises on quality and materials. A sneaker built more like a formal shoe than a sneaker, all leather, no man-made materials. A sneaker that could be resold, furthering their life even further. And then I found the Harlestone Hand Stitch by Crown Northampton, possibly the most luxurious sneaker in the world. First up, let's start with an overview of what we know about the shoe. They are handmade in Northampton, England, which means they are properly handmade. The upper leather is vegetable tanned. The sole is made from a sustainable material called Lacte Javier. They have a traditional oak bark counter and stiffener. The footbed is filled with cork by hand. They cost 350 great British pounds, which is around 640 Australian dollars. Uh, but because I'm outside of the EU, I got a 20% refund after checkout, with the total being 290 pounds, which is around 530 Australian dollars. And all Crown Northampton shoes are made to order. Another thing I thought important to mention is that the insole isn't removable. So if you have orthotics, you may have trouble fitting them in. Finally, these shoes are from Crown's hand stitch line. They also have a slightly lower cost line, you could call that maybe their main collection, that are still incredibly high quality and potentially the best shoes on the market, excluding these ones. But they miss things like the vegetable tan leather, the Lacte Javier sole, as well as some internal changes to the materials that they use. This week, I'm gonna start with an unboxing and then get into my initial impressions and see if they deserve the crown to be the king of the sneakers. Starting off with the box, it's a very clean white box with a simple logo on the top. There are no other details on the end as these are made to order and not kept in a shelf or in a store. Next, we find a cute little envelope that's filled with a pair of high quality replacement laces and a cute little veg tan key fob that's already attached to my car keys. There's also a lovely little note inside talking about the shoes and the company. The shoes themselves are beautiful. The stitching is incredibly tight along the French binding and the sole strobel stitch. The design overall is very minimalistic. The leather is very soft out of the box, a word that is a bit overused in my opinion, but still explains it really well is the word supple. The color is sort of a gray beige color that Crown describe as off-white. The sole of the shoes is immediately unusual to the touch and it feels very natural, like rubber, like a latex or a crepe. It's very soft and squishy. It's surprisingly unique. Finally, the box includes two extremely high quality suede-like shoe bags that are likely microfiber at a guess. These bags are a quality even above the ones that Edward Green ships. It's a nice touch for the price. I received the sneakers earlier this week and have worn them inside, mostly walking up and down the stairs from my office to the kitchen and back. And no doubt I will do a full review once I've spent more time with them on the foot. My initial impressions, such as it is, is that the shoes are, as their product description page quite rightly describes, the pinnacle of luxury handmade sneakers. The fit, feel and finish of them is impeccable and right out of the box they are very comfortable. I believe that in no small part this is due to the luck they have here sold. There are a lot of elements coming together to create a sneaker that is truly luxurious. 
Before we go into detail about some of the features that make these shoes the most luxurious sneaker in the world, I wanted to discuss why I chose Crown Northampton in the first place. Hopefully you've seen my review of my much loved Koyos. If not, the video should be popping out. I genuinely love those shoes. They're well made, they're extremely comfortable, and they've certainly taken me further than a sneaker should be expected to do so. I wasn't kind to them, but they still have an end date to them. Now, it's not that the upper looks bad, and it's not that they aren't still comfortable. It's actually the materials on the inside of the shoe that have been deteriorating over the last six months or so. The lining leather has started to crack and split and especially around the counter, making it not especially comfortable when wearing thin socks or no-show socks, which is my use case. Even with religious use of shoe trees after every wear, it seems that my sweaty little feet mixed with a fairly hot Australian climate has meant that the chrome tan suede counter and the padding there has gradually disintegrated over time. This has nothing to do with Koyo and my wife's pair that we got at the exact same time have fared much better. Clearly, I guess she has much less sweaty feet than I do. I'd still buy another pair of Koyos in a heartbeat and often recommend people to do so. That leaves us with Crown. It was my search and desire to find a sneaker that would outlast my Koyos and more effectively embody my mission to find products that fulfill my buy less, buy better lifestyle. Crown ticked all the boxes. And we're going to get into the details of the materials shortly, but something I wanted to mention here that is an important part in my decision is that they are made in England, in the historical town of shoemaking that we seem to discuss so frequently. This is important because I have a strong desire to pay craftspeople in a company a way that is, it might be weird to hear, as high as humanly possible. There's no getting past it, these shoes are incredibly expensive for a sneaker. Yes, the materials are of very high quality, but the tangible benefit of that is yet to be seen. I honestly can't wait for a longer term review. To me, the cost was worth the investment as I was paying a team of people in Northampton to slowly and carefully craft my shoes. And presumably they are paid appropriately for the effort. I thought I'd better fact check that, so I did a little bit of Googling and there aren't many job listings for shoemakers in Northampton. It's a fairly small community, but the one I could find was a general shoemaker, which was paid around 15 great British pounds an hour, which is just shy on 30 Australian dollars an hour. It's hard to know exactly how long these shoes take to make, but let's say that they take 15 hours of total time in the hand, this means that around 225 pounds or 400 dollars of the overall cost goes to cover the wage. I know that's not accurate, but it paints a picture and I'm happy to pay them for it. Vegetable tan leather was probably the deciding factor for me purchasing these hull stones over the Crown Northampton Overstone, which is about 30% less expensive and uses a full grain chrome tan leather. I wanted veg tan leather mainly due to the way that it's made. It is the way that prehistoric people tanned their leathers, naturally. Chrome tan leathers can be turned from a raw piece of hide into a piece of leather in a matter of days or weeks using chromium salts and oils to quickly strip and infuse the hides. Comparatively, vegetable tan leather takes months to tan and uses vegetable tannins, which is basically tree bark, and a lot of handwork and patience goes into making that final product. Since this discovery in 1858 till today, chrome tanning accounts for roughly 90% of all leather production. It's faster and cheaper, but it has some horrific impacts on the environment and the health of those involved in this creation. There are factories out there who are much more aware of these impacts and do a lot to try and mitigate their impact on the environment and their people. Koya was one of these companies, but it isn't the industry norm yet. Vegetan leather is known for its ability to have a beautiful and rich patina that develops over time. The leather has the ability to last very long without conditioning and is extremely unlikely to crack or dry out. The only thing that chrome tan leather has over veg tan leather, or at least in my experience, is that it's typically softer and more supple out of the box, though in this case, that's not the case. One reason that veg tan leather is quite uncommon, in white sneakers particularly, is that it's incredibly difficult to get the finish to be white. I honestly don't know how this finish was achieved on these crowns, but for example on my Koyos where the leather is a pure white, it's achieved by a layer that goes on top of the leather to create that white finish. This isn't going to be present on the crowns, 
The finish is more natural and represents a color that's a mix of a gray and a beige, depending on the light. And I'm particularly curious how these are going to age and patina, as I've not ever seen a pair in the wild. One of the most instantly noticeable parts of the shoe is the sole. It's a completely unique material that I haven't seen on other footwear, be it boots, shoes or sneakers. The material is entirely sustainably produced and it is called Lacte Javier. It is made from virgin Javier milk directly harvested from the Salsu or crying wood tree. In simple terms, it's rubber. Or more specifically, it's a natural latex, and based on the word Sao Su, I will assume that it comes from Vietnam, as this is the Vietnamese word for rubber. The shoals themselves are available in a choice of natural gum, white, or black. Compared to other soles that I own, like leather, Dainite, Vibram, Margam, and even the wedge soles on my trickers, these are extremely soft, malleable even. This makes them very comfortable under the foot for the first wear, when my Margam soles took a few wears to get there. The only concern of this is that, in my mind, a softer material is more likely to be easily worn down and may need to be replaced more regularly. The sole itself is covered in a grid-like pattern that gives it an interesting tactile feeling. The underside has a range of slits, some thick, others thin, which would help with grip in slippery environments. Another thing to report back on. Another feature that I was incredibly glad to see was the oak bark counter and stiffener. As mentioned earlier, the counter is the area that I had trouble with on my Koyos, so it was important to me that the materials used in this area were of particularly high quality. Oak bark tan leather is among some of the highest quality in terms of longevity, and is typically a material used on top tier leather soles. Soles like JR is an oak bark tanned leather. The counter itself has no padding, basically it's a couple of layers of leather with a final piece of suede side leather to keep the heel in place and to make it nice and comfortable. Compared to my Koyo, which has a lot of padding in the heel area, it's different feeling on the foot. Closer to a dress shoe than it is a sneaker. But personally, I find this very comfortable out of the box and with all things leather related, it will get more comfortable over time. The final important feature of Crown as a company is that they are made to order, which is essential from a sustainability perspective. I wanted to specifically call out the time that it takes between ordering and receiving your shoes because that is a consideration for some people. The Crown website says that it is anywhere between 20 and 30 working days until the pair is shipped out. I ordered my pair on Friday the 27th of August. They left the factory around 50 days later on the 4th of November, and they were delivered to me on the 8th of November around 55 working days later. This is almost double the quoted time, which although it isn't the end of the world, is certainly worth noting if you're expecting these to arrive quickly. I don't know if anyone at Crown will ever watch this, but if you are watching, hello. I hope I can provide some constructive feedback for you guys. It might be pertinent to update future clients on the stages of production as they progress. A simple step-by-step -step of production, say their start of production, they've been lasted and they're in their final stages or something to that effect would be greatly appreciated. Even if it's not an email, but a place on the website where someone can check for themselves. If I'm spending nearly $700 on anything, I expect a higher level of transparency and customer service to back up the product itself. Or, if the shoes are going to take longer than the quoted time, maybe an email just to let someone know. And this is the new sort of updated delivery time. Hopefully that's some food for them. Crown Northampton do make the most luxurious and high quality sneaker on the market. I don't really see much room for debate on this point. Their main line is more than enough shoe for someone looking for the best quality sneaker at the lowest price point. But if you are determined to have the best of the best, then these are undoubtedly it. I'm very excited to see how these shoes age and develop over time and look forward to sharing that with you in the future. This has been a fun one, so thanks very much for watching. Links are in the description as always, and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Cheers.